Alive. Welcome to TLC Alive. We're so glad that you've joined us today where we come with a kingdom perspective. I have with me today Dr. Mary Crum, a prophet at, Ray, at the Life Center, and I'm Apostle Buddy Crum. And we're here, by the way, we are a husband and wife and have been ministering together for quite a few years, and it's been a, a joy to, to work together. And I just look forward to the opportunity to sharing with you, with her, what it is that God's doing today. Our subject today that we're going to be speaking about is a historic event, really, in that Dr. Billy Graham went to be with the Lord last week, last Wednesday, matter of fact, about 8 o'clock in the morning. His funeral is for this weekend, and uh, there, uh, it's by invitation only because there would be thousands and thousands of people that would try to attend his funeral, and understandably, why? Because such a great, great man. Dr. Mary, you and I grew up in the time when Billy Graham was what we would call at the top of his life, or as I was going to say, top of his game, but certainly a man that you and I knew by TV and radio who saturated at that time what was the, what was the evangelism or the evangelist. You recall that, I'm sure. And oh, yes, yes, because there was a... When God's doing something, he usually has a, some kind of technology that, that mm. is new or that is really broad spread. And, it, and for Billy Graham, it would be the TV. Yes. And, uh, you know, people, we think we've discovered so many things, and God just says, that's right, it's right now, it's my time, <laughs> it's my time. But it was the, through evangelism, uh, through uh, the TV, that he yes. was so well known, although he had many, many uh, meetings, many crusades all over the world, Yes. but uh, the, the average person could know Billy Graham and know and hear the gospel. He, he was probably a man that may not be replaced, as we would say. What do you think? You know, I don't think that God wants to replace him. Yes. I think that God always wants to multiply what we're doing with him. That's good. That's good. But I do think that that will happen, yes. What do you believe might happen? What is the Lord saying to you as it relates to the evangelist, the evangelist itself? Well, I had some thoughts about this. And, of course, and so, some uh, prophetic revelation. So what I did at Life Center, we have many uh, prophets and many credible people who have good experience so I called about five of them together mm -hmm. and I didn't tell them what I had but uh, I asked them what God was speaking to them about and it was just amazing because every one of us had the same basic Wonderful. things we would say it differently and we might add an illustration or something mm -hmm. in but we all were getting the same thing and I t in order to answer this question can I take a little... Oh, I'm anxious to hear. Okay. I'm, I'm really okay. want to hear what it is you are going to tell us. When, when uh, Bishop Bill Hammond, who is a father, he's our spiritual father with Christian International, and uh, when he was a very young man, the Lord gave him a revelation of how he was going to restore the five-fold office calls of the... the, the, the uh, Evangelist? No, yes, the evangelist, the teacher, uh, I mean the pastor, the teacher, and the prophet and apostle. Now the world was kind of ready. We, evangelist, pastor, you definitely, teacher, the, a lot of times the church world didn't really recognize teaching as an office call. Just anybody could teach, and they can, but there's a specific call and an anointing and an authority that goes yes. with the teacher. In fact, during the teaching rest, rest, restoration, we all had many, many tapes. Yes. <laughs> we used to say, you'll know them by their tapes, because we would go and sit for hours and listen to the teaching because God was doing something. But Billy Graham, and, and then, then when the prophets came along, which that's me, um, the people really were ready to stone you sometimes <laughs> until they heard the specific word that God had to say to them. And that would, that, that would really get them because it, nobody could know some of these things except God. 
And then the apostles, which many thought that all the apostles had died out. And, uh, but, and yet, in the book of Ephesians, it mentions all, four, uh, all five of those office calls. Well, when in Bishop Hammond's revelation was that in the 50s, the evangelist would be restored. And in the 60s, that it would be the pastor. And that was a time when pastors began to, to feel the need to have independence. Some, and uh, independent churches were birthed. Then the teaching of many, many teachers uh, with the faith move and the, the, the validity and the authority of the word and who you are in Christ. And then in the, the, with the uh, restoration of the prophets and then the apostles. But I say all that because part of the word for where we're going, you need to understand where we've been. And Billy Graham was at the very beginning of that restoration. He wasn't the only evangelist, but he had a very unique niche in his, in his calling in that he could relate to heads of state. He could relate to simple, the simplest of the simple. And uh, he, he was not an activist, although I know stories and have heard stories of how he would pull down the barriers where, where the restrictions in Africa. He said, I will not preach here if you don't let everybody sit in the same area where there was segregation. And then in the United States, he literally pulled, they didn't pull it back, so he just pulled back the, the, the rope that said you can't sit beyond this rope if you're, if you're uh, of color. And so uh, he wasn't an activist, but he had an authority that he used for God and yet stayed totally on purpose. So the, the word, of you, the, the question that you asked was, what can he be replaced? What, what's going to happen? And this is what all of us received, that God, this is like a marker, that his death was a marker. It's interesting that God let him live through all those restorations to get to where we are now, which we believe is the beginning. And we've begun in the, the, the uh, saints move, has been birthed, and we've always been about the saints being able to do the work of the ministry as, and taught and led by these fivefold office gifts. But what uh, Billy Graham, what's happening with him, God let him live through all of them and into the beginning of the saints move because this is how he's going to be replaced, not by a one man. There will be evangelists and there will be much teaching that's with power uh, but it will be the power of the word as, a, as they've spoken forth. But there will be in the marketplace, there will be uh, in the malls, there will be any place where there's going to be such a witnessing for God that it will just pour out of the average saint. And God's going to honor it. And there's, there, out of that there will be much, 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 much fruit. And there will be many, many people who will come to know the Lord Jesus as their Savior. Now along with this, the miracles are accompanying the evangelist. And many of the evangelists are going to be the signs, wonders, and miracles that the Word talks about. This is the season for that. And for Billy Graham, it's kind of like Moses led him to a certain place. And on that platform, then Joshua and Caleb went into to the land that was promised. And the land that God has promised Billy Graham, that he's, he's received much, he's seen much. But um, because of what he did, what God's going to do is, is go, be like, the, the, uh, like a team. He's going to have a lot of team ministries and evangelism. And there will be uh, the, 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 the Joshua's and the Caleb's will put a demand on the anointing of God, the evangelistic anointing of God, and the, the, the wonders and the signs and the miracles in order to go to cover the earth. It's just going to cover the earth. So there, there will be all of that. The, the fivefold office calls, the fivefold ministries, will come together, just like the pastors came together to support Billy Graham. There'll be a coming together that will be greater than it's been, and the the, the, uh, the even the the fivefold office calls. It's not uh, yet recognized in many of our Christian areas or streams, but uh, God's going to begin to to unfold that in a way that it's recognizable and acceptable. And uh, I really believe that although many people have been to heads of state, we've been to different countries and heads of state, and Bishop Hammond 
travels at probably as we're speaking. He's, he's only 83 or 84. Yes. And he travels, I don't know how many, hundreds uh, no. of thousands <laughs> of miles a year because of the authority of the word. Well, mm. well, Billy Graham, the authority that God placed within him is not dead. It's not dead. But it's going to be in and through people that are just like you and me. And, uh, but, but have that fervency. So it's kind of like the, the bones of Elijah, when, when the man fell into the open grave and touched the bones of Elijah, and, and the, bone, the, the man came back to life. They threw him in Elijah's grave. He came back to life in the Old Testament. It's kind of like that life, that spirit, is even greater than it was because of Billy Graham and the things that were released. That is so exciting. Thank you for sharing that. You know, that when, when you started sharing that and talked about that we've had all of the fivefold ministry restored, and what you and I have been doing for all these years is equipping the saints, equipping and empowering the saints to do the work of the ministry. This and is our time. <laughs> they believe you're right. This, we've been doing this all this time because we recognize mm. and have a passion for the saints, to, to, that's our joy. It is. When the saints can hear God, that does not make everybody prophets. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. But they don't have the same authority or the same uh, anointing. But I'm telling you, I've heard words from the average saint that has that gifting and allows God to, to uh, bring forth their abilities, the same word that you would hear from a prophet. Wow. That is so exciting. And I am... Uh, I, I, I'm really, you made me feel better on the inside uh, because of what you've said and prophesied to us. And, uh, you know, Billy Graham. Can he be replaced? You know, can he be reproduced, 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 reproduced? Oh, yeah. Another I get life. that, that there, we'll have a lot of Billy Grahams around and teachers and evangelists and, and uh apostolic leaders and prophetic leaders. But as you've said, it's not the leaders alone like the Billy Graham was, the quintessential evangelist. There will be millions of them and we'll begin to see people turn to the Lord and those with the other office equipping will be able to build them up in order that they can be empowered to do the work of the ministry. I think it is probably the most excited time that you and I have experienced mm -hmm. in our many years mm -hmm. of ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, We've also lived through the fivefold ministries being restored and the saints moved. And uh, you know, sometimes you look back at your life and you, you realize that what you're called to do, you may be operating in that now, and you look back and you realize that's always where my passion has been. For me, if I've been able to do anything at all, there's always a team that wants to do the same thing. Yes. And yeah, I'm I always agree. willing to lead them. Yes, you are. You have done a <laughs> so, so the wonderful best job. So the in ministries are to do is to lead the, lead the people in their area of expertise. Mm. I think we are blessed to have seen that restoration mm -hmm. firsthand. I was thinking about the Billy Graham and his uh, greatness and how we had experienced that in the 50s and the 60s and on until his, actually his last crusade was 2005. So we've seen all of the others restored. And I thought about it that some people that didn't know Billy Graham in this generation because he hasn't done a crusade in what, 13 years. But nonetheless, that I believe God allowed him to live, to enjoy his life, but I think that the name would have begun to diminish if he had lived much longer. When I look at it spiritually, yes, I believe that he lived exactly to the minute, exactly where God had for him to be. Because when at his death, I believe that there's been, a, and, and all the, the prophets that I talked to believe the same thing, that there was a shift that mm. took place. Wow. And, when, and just like when Moses died, there was a shift that took place. Yes. But it wasn't a diminish. It, it, was, it was what God chose to be raised up 
to take it to the next place. Mm -hmm. And you notice that there, Joshua led the people, but he had Caleb right there by his side. By his side. So it was a team ministry. Yes. And I, I believe that, that, this, that Billy Graham's name will be known for a long time. And, uh, but that, that the shift and the, 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 the sign, it's been like a, like a stake driven in the ground, begin, begin the next phase. And it's interesting as we say begin the next phase because in a lot of areas in our own ministry, God has said, you're, com you're almost completing a cycle, but I'm not done with you. You're not gonna complete, you're just gonna broaden it and begin on another cycle. And I feel like that's where a lot of things are. And Billy Graham's a sign mm -hmm. of, the, of the reaching out, the going out, the embracing more, embracing, uh, the, the expanding. And even the reproducing reproducers, I believe that that'll be, that will happen also. I, I do too. You know, you were mentioning the fact that during the time of the 50s, when there was the uh, highlight of the restoration of the, uh, of the uh, evangelist, that there was TV and radio, mm -hmm. and then we know that tapes and recordings came, and now we have the internet, which takes all the boundaries away from reaching the entire world. I had a phone. I had to take it off because I don't know how to operate it really well, <laughs> so I don't know how to turn it off so that it wouldn't bother you. But I, I, uh, I have a phone that I can get all the latest news. Amazing. You know, pure Dick Tracy. <laughs> well, and you know, they can in other countries where they have restrictions, they can't restrict the airways like that. And, and I believe that, like you've said, the evangelist was through TV by a personality. Mm -hmm. And now the personality will be taken out and it will just be the pure message going out in mass reproduction. Beautifully, there, beautiful there will time. Always the evangelist uh, with the office called evangelism. Yes. But uh, there, the, the saints who have that uh, evangelistic fervor and anointing, uh, honestly, when Jesus says that we would do greater works than he, how can that be? You can't do greater works than, than Jesus could do. That's right. But except in mass. Yes. And I think that the evangelism in mass and spread out is going to be the answer. I, I'm, I'm excited. It's an exciting time. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a time when we have seen the Christianity really have to press through. And I think we'll always have to warfare through. The enemy doesn't want us to win. Oh, it's even greater warfare. Uh, have you read any of the social media? <laughs> I can imagine that's opposed to Billy Graham. It, 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 Isn't grieves, that? it grieves me that anybody could feel the way yeah. that some of that has been. And uh, it got a lot of pushback from the, the mainline uh, media, which I, I was glad to see that. But it was so, uh, so irreverent, so degrading. And what would you say, what, 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 how do you feel about people that, that would do that with Billy Graham? Well, you know, I, I have to uh, call on grace mm -hmm. to get through that one because having known what a humble man mm -hmm. he was and uh, unpretentious in every way, his total passion was intended for good results, for people to come to know Christ and all that he represents, not only salvation and eternity, but the ability to have strength and joy and those things. And I don't suppose people that haven't experienced that can understand it. But I do feel, except for the grace of God, defensive for Billy Graham. Well, you know, the word says that God will not be mocked. Yes. And of course, Billy Graham is not God, but he's God's man that, that was sent to do the work that he did. And he did it with such integrity and such yeah. humility and such fervor. And he never let his personality or his, his uh, preferences get in the way of being on target for God, on, on purpose for God. So God will not be mocked, and God is mocked when, when we mock yes. Billy Graham. When they, I don't say we, when they 
Mont Billy Graham yes. like that. And so I just say, may God have mercy on their Amen. soul. Amen. Amen. The very best I can do with that. And it's it's coming in mass as we've talked about today. You know, I think as we in this time of discussion, I, I think it would be good if you would just tell the people that are watching or in joining in with us today what they kind of can expect in, in what's going to come next with what you've said. I, I sense that an empowering is coming to people also individually. And what I, do you sense it? You answer that first. Well, I was going to say, I, I sense an empowering within the people. We call it an anointing and a boldness that's going to rise up in people as they find the Holy Spirit will position them in the right place at the right time and they will be able, able to, they will be able to operate in any or all of those fivefold callings. And I believe out of this boldness there's going to be a warfare and pushback, as you've said, but I really do believe that we're going to see an expansion like we've never seen before and where Billy Graham reached over 230 million people, it said, I think we'll reach billions, over 2 billion people in the next decade of, uh, because people are going to be convinced and convicted about what they believe. Yes. The, the, uh, the, during the time in the 50s, there were a lot of people who were nominal Christians, and, uh, and people sometimes didn't talk about their, quote, religion. Right. And make everything you know, nice. And uh, Billy Graham was very humble, very uh, truthful, and had such humility that he wasn't offensive, but he was definite. Yes. And uh, now I think that the, the results of his death is now is that people will be bolder in the way that they talk about yes. it. Because uh, there will be those that will want to fight. Uh, against that uh, and uh, you've got things that you can't really fight against you've got social media the airwaves that you can't really have a have a um, a resolve sometimes because it can just go on and on but in that I think that that the, re the revival spirit or, uh, or the, the evangelistic spirit is going to be such that people will begin to recognize the the uh, I'm going to say it this way: the demonic backing of some of the the, uh, the the social media and some of the attacks that have come, that it will be even from a demonic uh, background, the back uh, the, uh, uh, source, and it will be so offensive that 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 will even even cause a more of a, a, a line to be drawn. Amen. I think that's yeah. right. Yeah. And, uh, and he drew a line. I mean, he drew mm -hmm. the line that said, in fact, Billy Graham could preach on any, any book in the back. For me, he could preach salvation from any yes, book. Yes, he could. <laughs> but his message, he could use the same outline. Man sins. God loves you, and he made a way. His name is Jesus Christ. The only, only uh, way to, to God was through his son Jesus, and, and because of that, he will, will receive you and cleanse you of your sins and you can be uh, restored with your relationship with God and you need to do it now. <laughs> now is the time. And that was always, he was true to that message. So you, you're going to have people that are, are be true no matter what distractions, what threats. And I think that the threats even on people's lives will be, mm. um, that, that'll be, the line will be drawn. You know, I, I know the, also that Billy Graham did speak exactly like you we're just discussing. But he also said there was a hell, and that was the alternative oh, yeah. to... Uh, I, I, did I leave that out? <laughs> yeah. There's hell, and then there's the cross. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and you don't want to go to hell. No, you, you don't. Do. And you don't have to. And, and that was his to. message. Yeah, and right. He has provided a way out. So we hope today that you have joined in with us and really do see the opportunity to be a part of God's army that's moving right now. 
Don't miss that we are in probably the most accelerated time in the in Christianson, Dom, and you want to be a part. So get equipped, get trained, be prepared, be on call, be ready, be uh, on demand, and God will use you uh, m much more than you ever realize. So we're so hop happy today that we were able to share some things that God's saying. And thank you, Dr. Mary, for bringing us uh, an update on what the death of Billy Graham represents, that it is not the end, it's the beginning. Oh, no. It's the platform to launch the next phase. We bless you.